Assalamu alaikum A2s, hope uh, you are all doing well, okay? Uh, and you, you see I am in a state of quarantine, look at my hair and all, all my hulia, okay? So please excuse me for that and just focus on your uh, P3 where you have, you guys have done really badly in this P3, okay? So I'm starting from the first question, by the way this was a paper uh, that was given to you. I just changed the second question which was from the trapezium rule which is no more in your syllabus, okay? So the first question says use logarithms to solve this equation. This is 2 raised to power 5x that is equal to 3 raised to power 2x plus 1. There were like, you know, two different ways of solving this. Uh, some of you splitted these with the power x and some of you took the log directly. So I would suggest you take the direct, direct take the log directly on both the sides. So this is your uh, ln 5 raised to power, oh sorry, 2 raised to power uh, 5x. This is ln 3 raised to power 2x plus 1, okay? So now this is uh, 5x ln 2 and this is 2x plus 1 ln 3. Some people, like you know, telling, uh, like despite telling again and again that don't use the calculator in the in the mid of the working, okay, but you guys still use the calculator and you get far away from the actual answer. So try to keep them in exact form. So this is 5x ln 2, this is 2x ln 3, there is a lot of algebra involved here. This is 5x ln 2 minus 2x ln 3, that is equal to ln 3. You take x common from here, this is 5 ln 2 minus 2 ln 3, that is equal to ln 3. And finally, you get your answer ln 3 over 5 ln 2 minus 2 ln 3. This is the value of x. You can use your calculators because the, the, the it says that give your answer correct to three significant figures. So now at this stage, you must use your calculators. Okay, now the second question, again, it was from the same topic. Okay, so you have to find x here. So you guys have done this in many different ways. So I would do it like this, 5 minus e raised to minus 2x, that is equal to half. And then this is 5 minus e raised to minus 2x. This ln inverse of half, which is which is written as e raised to per half, okay? Now this is going to be this, this goes to this side and this comes to this side. This is going to be e raised to power minus 2x. That is 5 minus e raised to per half, okay? There's no need to use the calculators right now. Now you take the log on both the sides. So this is ln e raised to power minus 2x. This is ln 5 minus e raised to power half, okay? So now this is going to be minus 2x ln e. This is the same. And you know that ln e is 1. So this x is going to be minus half into this ln 5 minus e raised to the power half. Now at this stage you should use your calculator and you have to give your answer correct to three significant figures. Start. Okay, now the third question. This was from the binomial expansion. Okay, some of you guys, I don't know why you took this like a difficult question. This was really an easy question. It, it says uh, show that for small values of x squared where the value of the constant k is to be determined. So now this k uh, is the coefficient of x is for 4. So that means you have to go up to maximum to the power 4, okay? So uh, you have to expand this using the binomial expansion. So this is uh, 1 plus n x. Do write this minus here, okay? Plus n into n minus 1 over 2 factorial into this x square. So you see this will give you a power x, x square to the power 2. So you have reached the power 4. There is no need to further expand this. And then minus uh, this, this one. This is 1 plus n x plus n into n minus 1 in over 2 factorial into this 6x squared square, so that's it, okay? So we have reached the power 4 over here as well, okay? So if you look at this expansion, now you will see that uh, 
Okay, so uh, if you simplify this, you must have this thing over here, okay? So when you, uh, like, you know, some of you ignored this minus sign, some of you made a mistake of writing this minus, minus over here. Like, there were the plus minus mistakes, that's why you got this wrong, okay? So this is, uh, this, when you change this, when you open this, these signs will be changed, okay? And these will be cancelled out, so you will be left with 16x is for 4. So this means that your k had to be 16. Okay, now we reach the fourth question. This was from the trigonometry plus the differentiation. Now let me tell you, there is a, like a big number of students who didn't even read the question. Let me tell you. And the right away started solving this equation uh, like you know without seeing that it was about the stationary point the x coordinate of the stationary point so you you have to start it like you know by taking its derivative so this is going to be minus 6 sine 2x plus 7 cos x and then you have to put that equal to 0 so that was the problem in this question that you like you know the ones who couldn't do this they were the ones who didn't read the question they didn't read the question okay that's what i have to say so uh, the one who uh, differentiated they knew that now they had to change this uh, with the like you know double angle formula this is going to be minus 12 sine x cos x plus 7 cos x that is equal to 0 okay now again you guys are you people really show your weaknesses in your algebra like people simply ignored this cos x over here they were cancelling the cos x with the cos x halake they had to take this cos x common over here and you people didn't get one answer that had to be obtained through this uh, cos x so this is minus 12 sin x and then this is plus 7 that is equal to 0 so one of the equations had to be cos x equal to 0 the other equation had to be sin x that is equal to 7 over 12 and this had to give you one answer that was x equal to uh, pi by 2 okay and from here you have to get two answers because this is positive so in, in here and keeping your calculators more than radians you could have got the two values of x from here one is uh, 0.623 and the other one is 2.5 you see there are seven marks for this so if you don't write this correct to three significant figures you will lose a mark okay thank you okay question number five on integration you must know that we we cannot integrate tan okay um, because we know that the derivative of sine is cos so cos integral is sine the, der the derivative of cos is minus sine and minus sine's integral is uh, cos and so then uh, tan's derivative is secant squared and then secant squared's integral is tan so if you have to like you know integrate anything other than sine cos and uh, secant square you have to use the trigonometrical identities trigonometric identities so that you can um, write your given question into the form that you can really integrate okay so here you have to uh, recall that 1 plus 10 square x is secant square x okay so if you just split this 4 into 3 plus 1 so then the same question becomes 3 plus secant squared 2x so this becomes a very easy question now integrate this is simply 3x plus tan 2x divided by 2 the derivative of this angle and then plus c that's how you get this right okay okay uh, 5b this question really tested you guys very very few of you could solve this now, now this doesn't mean that you people do not know how to integrate the thing is that this was really um, a situation that you were not aware of and like you know very strange kind of solutions you guys were given so you had to basically uh, see that this form cannot be integrated okay so you, you could apply the, the sine double angle formula over here so let me tell you this sine x plus let me just expand it here this is pi by 4 to pi by 2 this is going to be sine x cos pi by 6 plus sine pi by 6 cos x 
over sin x dx. Okay. Now, if you split this one, so you see the signs get cancelled. So you have this is pi by 4, pi by 2. So cos pi by 6, which is under root 3 over 2, I think, yes. This is under root 3 over 2. And then plus, this is sine pi by 6 is half, okay? Half, and this is cos x over sin x. I'm writing this intentionally cos x over sin x. I'm not writing this cotangent x. So that I can tell you that, that this thing had to be integrated using the fact that if you have f dash x over f of x, so it is going to be ln f of x plus c, okay? So its integral had to be limit from pi by 4 to pi by 2. This is under 3 over 2 x and then plus half ln sin x. That's it. And then you could have applied the limits onto it. Okay, now this the sixth question was from the vectors. Okay, so we were given um, two points on the line L1, and there is the, the equation given for the line L2, and we have to show that these two lines they are skewed, they are not non-parallel, non-intersecting. Okay, so the first thing is you have need to have the equation for this line. Okay, so this equation is already here. R is seven one one plus mu into 1 to 5. The other equation for this would be uh, 0, 1, 5 plus lambda into, you find the direction like this is, this is 2 minus 0 is 2, minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3, and 1 minus 5 is minus 4. Now, a very, very strange thing happened, like in fact you guys did a very weird kind of a mistake in this, that you took the same uh, constant in both the equations. Like if mu was given here, you guys took mu here as well. This is simply a nonsense thing. I'm sorry to say this. You, you see, different equations need to have different symbols, different constants in, in them, okay? So you, you can't have the same constant in both the equations. So that, that is one of the very weird, uh, like, you know, kind of a mistake. I think three, four of you made this mistake. So now this one, this equation is going to give us three of its parametric equations. This is like uh, x equal to 7 plus mu, and then y is equal to 1 plus 2 mu, and then z is equal to 1 plus 5 mu. This is the first set of parametric equations from the one the, uh, from L2, and then from the, the L1 you have x equal to 2 lambda, y equal to um, 1 minus 3 lambda, and then your z is equal to 5 minus 4 lambda. This is your second uh, set of uh, equations, okay? Now from these two sets you have uh, three uh, equations in lambda and mu. Uh, these three equations are like you, you, you have 7 plus mu that is equal to 2 lambda. You can write this mu is equal to 2 lambda minus 7. The first equation, let me name this is 1 and this is 2. Okay, uh, yes. Now, from the y's, you have 1 plus 2 mu that is equal to 1 minus 3 lambda. So this gives you 2 mu equal to minus 3 lambda. That is your second equation. And then from the z's you have 1 plus 5 mu. That is equal to 5 minus 4 lambda. That is your third equation. Now guys, you have to choose any two of these equations. You have to solve them simultaneously. So ideally, ideally you could solve the first two. And then the third equation in this case will not be satisfied. Okay. So that would mean that the lines are skewed. Okay, we move to the second part of the sixth question. He says, find an acute angle between the direction of the line L2. He says, direction of the line L2 and the direction of the x-axis. The direction of the x-axis, guys, that is 1, 0, 0, okay? So if you have taken this correctly, now I'm, I'm, I'm so sad about those people who have taken this direction correctly, 
but they have taken this position vector instead of this direction so please guys this is the direction vector and this is the position vector of the point on this line so we have to basically find the angle between these two directions okay so that's that would be uh, cos theta that is 1 0 0 dot 1 2 5 over the square this is 1 and then times this 1 plus 4 plus 25 so this will be cos theta that is equal to 1 over under root i think that is 30 yeah yeah this is 30 so that that will give you the acute angle between the direction of l2 and the x-axis okay uh, the seventh question your favorite topic differential equations okay many of you are demanding the solution of this question and inshallah uh, i'll be uh, solving some more differential equations uh, so let me do this first uh, later on okay now this is dy by dx okay and this is 4x into this and we're given two values of like you know corresponding values of x and y and we have to give the answer y in terms of x there are nine marks for this question okay so so guys we do need to have the the things in product form whenever we are dealing with the differential equation okay so this is already this 4x times this do not try to expand this okay so one side will have y with this the other side will have x in it okay so this is obviously this is dy and the other side will have the dx okay so all of this goes down here so uh, and this is going to be 4x dx and just to save a step over here, I'll be factorizing this 3y squared plus 10y plus 3. This is 3y squared plus 9y plus y plus 3. And this is 3y into y plus 3 and then, then y plus 3. So this is written as, this is y plus 3 and this is 3y plus 1. Again, uh, something like, you know, sad to say over here some of you guys solve this uh, as a quadratic equation through the calculator you found the roots and then you try to write them as a product over here so so that really uh, resulted in, in in a wrong answer so you have to factorize this okay don't use the calculator like you can, you can take an idea about the factors but please think you must have to see that the product should be this okay so this is this is not an equation this is uh, an expression that needed to be factorized okay so this is this now uh, we put the integration sign on both the sides over here so this side is going to be integrated with respect to x this is going to be integrated with respect to y and you must know that why did i factorize this because if i just write it as it is dy over all of this we cannot integrate anything keeping that into the in the denominator position so uh, we have to think that what technique has to be used over here so you will have to write the partial fractions for this okay i'm using this student's work to see what were the partial fractions uh, yeah she has made uh, for this or oh, should i do the, these I think I let me show you how to write the partial fraction because that would be a quick revision of your partial fractions as well. This was the first degree, I mean the first level of the partial fractions. This is a over y plus 3, 2 fractions, okay? 3y plus 1. So this 1 is a into 3y plus 1 and this b into y plus 3 you put your y as minus 1 over 3 this is 1 and this is b into minus 1 over 3 plus 3 this gives you 1 is equal to b into uh, i think this is 3, 3, 9, 8 over 3 so your b is 3 over 8 okay and then similarly you put uh, y equal to minus 3 okay sorry for this writing you know uh, i write just like this this is 1 is equal to and this is going to be 3 3 are 9 plus uh, minus 9 plus 1 this is minus 8 so your a is minus 1 over 8 
Yes, I'm getting the correct answer. Yes, okay. So this is going to be written as um, minus 1 over 8 into y plus 3. I hope you can read it, okay? And then plus the other one is 3 over 8. And this is uh, 3y plus 1, okay? This all dy. And let me erase this from here. And that is equal to, we can integrate this. This is going to be 4x squared over 2. I will be writing the c thing to this side. Now guys, you can take this 1 over 8 common from here if you want to make it easy. So let me take this minus 1 over 8 as common because this really confused many of you. So this is 1 over 8 into minus 1 over y plus 3 plus 3 over 3y. I really like this 3 over here. Why do I like this 3 over here? Yes, any guesses? Hmm? Yeah, because 3y plus 1's derivative is 3. So we really like this 3 over here. Otherwise, we had to bring a 3 over here forcefully, okay? This is dy and this is 2x squared. Now, this is going to be uh, 1 over 8 into minus ln y plus 3. And this is plus simply ln 3y plus 1, okay? And just to keep this simpler, I'll be taking my c as 1 over 8 ln c. You see, that is how you can work smartly to, to reduce your um, working time. So instead of taking a plus c, I have taken it as 1 over 8 because there is 1 over 8 and then ln c with this. Now all of this will become 1 over 8 ln. And this is going to be, uh, these two have a plus sign, but then this is going to be c into 3y plus 1 over this y plus 3. And that is equal to 2x squared. Now let's use these two values over here, 0 and 1, to find this the value of c, okay? I'll be doing that over here. Okay, uh, x is 0. So this becomes... 1 over 8 ln, when you put your x0, sorry, uh, y is 1. So this is going to be uh, c into, this is uh, 4 and this is 4, okay? So this is c into 4 over 4 and that is equal to 0 over here, okay? This, these 4s are cancelled. So your 1 over 8 ln c, that is equal to 0. Okay, in other words, ln c is equal to 0 and your c is ln inverse of 1, that is going to be equal to 1. So your c is 1. Now this equation becomes uh, 1 over 8 ln 3y plus 1 over y plus 3 that is equal to 2x squared. You see your integration has all finished over here. Now this is your algebra <coughs> where you have to write this y in terms of x. Okay. So let's do that. This is not a very difficult thing. Now I'm just going to erase this. We don't need all of this. <coughs> so uh, from this point, uh, this would be ln 3y plus 1 over y plus 1 is going to be 16x squared. Your 3y plus 1 over y plus 1 is e raised to power 16x squared. Okay, then there is a cross multiplication. You do all that and finally you should have your answer as, uh, yeah, I think this is, I'm looking at, I think this is Abira's paper in front of me. This is 3 e raised to power 16x squared. I believe this is correct. I have marked this as correct. Minus e raised to power 16x. So when you like, you know, you have to do the cross multiplication, take like, this is only a grade 8 level question where you have to make y the subject of this equation. Okay? Okay, we reached to the 8th question, which was on to 
on the complex numbers. I'm skipping its first part that was done correctly from by most of you. Now the second part that was really a confusing one. Uh, the guys who read the question correctly, they, they did that correctly. It, it was saying it is given that P is a real number. This P is a real number, okay? So that means um, if I change this uh, W uh, with um, let's say 2 plus 4 iota and then I let this P be as P. So this, this complex number, if I call this let's say a complex number Z for, for instance, okay? So this Z is uh, uh, going to be 2 plus P plus 4 iota. The moment you write it like this, then you can easily see, yes, like you know, in what case the argument can be pi by 4. If you remember the typical values, the typical complex numbers, if you, if you recall that we did that if there is a 2 plus 2 iota, this is your A, this is your B, if they are both equal, you know the argument of Z that is tan inverse of B over A. Now if they are both have the same magnitude, so this is going to be 1, B over A, 2 over 2 is 1. So that means the argument is going to be pi by 4, okay? And if one of them is minus, and especially if this X is minus, then uh, it is still going to give you, I mean the basic angle pi by 4, but this would be uh, like, you know, uh, situated towards this direction. So this is going to give give you uh, an argument which is going to be pi by 4. So if this is uh, exactly 2 over here, they are both same, then your argument is going to be uh, pi by 4. And if uh, this, this one is negative, this is positive, but they still have the same magnitudes, the argument is going to be 3 pi by 4. So for pi by 4, you should have this 2 plus p equal to this 4. So that is going to be p is equal to um, 2. Okay? And for this 3 pi by 4, this 2 plus p, that should be, this 2 plus p should be equal to minus 4. Okay? Because the the real part, this this is the real axis, this has to be negative, okay? This is already 4, this has to be minus 4. So I'm putting this equal to minus 4. So this P is going to be minus 6, okay? So if your P is between minus 6 and 2, then your argument would be between pi by 4 and 3 pi by 4. Right. Okay, uh, the third question. This this question was, was really mishandled by you guys, okay? Uh, first of all, you need to have a, an, an accurate diagram over here. It, the question said that the complex conjugate of W is denoted by W star over here. The complex number W and W star are represented in an argon diagram by points S and T. Find in the form Z minus A, absolute that is equal to K, the equation of the circle passing through S, T and the origin, okay? So, if you just remember, I'm just going to give you a quick recap, like if there is absolute Z, that is equal to 2. So this is basically the modulus of a complex number Z, which is 2. So that means uh, it is going to be, the Z is going to be anywhere onto the circumference of a circle whose center is origin and the radius is 2, because this is 2, okay? And if this is Z minus a complex number A plus iota B, and then this is equal to 2, mm -hmm. so that means the this this will again be a circle, but the center would be A plus iota B instead of this uh, z, uh, 0, okay? So here this, this A is basically representing the center of... Uh, the, this this circle okay and k is being the radius now this becomes a question on uh, the equation of our circle okay if you see that this uh, is like you know and then this if you like you know, this point is 2 comma 4 and this point is 2 comma minus 4 and if I keep this point as x comma 0 I have to keep this as x comma 0 because 
that the circle is passing through the origin and these two points. So we, we are really sure that the y coordinate is going to be 0 over here. Okay. Now using the distance formula, I can say that since this is the radius, this is a radius, I can put like you know, if this point is let's say this is a point r, so rs is equal to rt. This will give us the coordinates of the the point R, in fact, the value of X. Okay, so you see, this is going to be, um, or you can also like you know, if you don't want to find these this distance, you can put this distance equal to R O as well. Okay, so this is totally up to you. So let's find this distance. This is going to be X minus two whole square plus zero minus four whole square, and then that is equal to this X. Okay, if I put okay, so this is the distance formula basically. So that is how you will find this uh, x over here. Okay, I'm squaring both the sides. This is x square minus 4x plus 4 plus 16. That is equal to x square. These x squares are cancelled. So you have 4x equal to 20 and your x is equal to 5. Okay, so you see that this point is 5, comma 0, and same as the radius of this this circle. So this is going to be z minus 5 that is equal to 5 that is the required equation of this circle. Okay the ninth question this this question had both the differentiation and integration in it. Okay the first part says show that the x coordinate of this maximum point m is 2. So we have to differentiate this and put that derivative equal to 0. This is uh, like you have to we have to use the u dot v thing over here u is x square so u dash is 2x and v is e raised to power 2 minus x so v dash is minus e raised to power 2 minus x this minus is because of the derivative of this minus x okay so now this is going to be uh, 2x u dash v e raised to power 2 minus x and then minus x square e raised to power 2 minus x okay so we put this equal to 0 so now here um, this is again guys you, you people lose marks because of the, the, the careless algebraic manipulation you see your x is common from here and then e raised to power 2 minus x is also common over here so these steps do have the marks you 2 is left from here and this is minus x so you don't just cut the x's or this thing. So to show that x is 0, this x is 0 over here. Okay, we don't need this. And then this e is per 2 minus x is 0. This is not possible. This cannot happen. We, we have no solution for this. And then this one is going to give us our answer 2 minus x equal to 0. And this is, that is x equal to 2. There was another smarter way of, uh, like you know, some of you did that. Since he was himself saying that show that the x coordinate of m is 2. So some of you substituted this 2 into it and you showed that, that the result is 0. So that was also an accurate thing to do. Start. Okay, uh, the second part, this again really tested you guys nerves. Okay, uh, this was a question on integration by parts where you have to do that twice in the same question. Okay, so if I just write over here the integral of u v dash that is u v minus u dash v. Okay, so if you had done this carefully, I think all of you were doing, you started correctly, but you guys uh, like, you know, lost in the way because of your silly mistakes. Okay, now your u is x square and your v dash is 2 raised to power, sorry, e raised to power 2 minus x. So this u dash is 2x. And this v is e raised to power 2 minus x over minus 1, so which makes it minus e raised to power 2 minus x. So uh, uv, so this is minus x squared, this is uv, and then minus, there is a minus, okay? And then you have this is u dash, and again this v, this is e raised to power 2 minus x dx, okay? So there's no need to be impatient over here, just relax, okay? This is easy question but needs your patience. Your patience is basically tested. x squared e is per 2 minus x. Uh, this is just a little bit of kneading it down. 
this is minus to minus plus and this is 2. I'm writing this as x e to the power 2 minus x dx. Now we need to um, integrate this again. I'm just ignoring these limits uh, right now. We can put them at the end. Okay, this is minus x squared e to the power 2 minus x plus 2. Now use the brackets here. So this is our u, this is our v dash, okay? So this is going to be x and we, we know this is the same one, so it's integral as minus e raised to power 2 minus x minus and x derivative is 1 and then this is minus e raised to power 2 minus x dx, okay? So please be careful over here, okay? This is minus x square e raised to power 2 minus x I'm just going to open this. This is minus 2x e raised to power 2 minus x. This is minus into minus plus and there is a 2 over here. This is plus 2 integral of e raised to power 2 minus. So please relax and like you know, don't get panic, okay? So finally this is minus x e raised to power 2 minus x minus 2x e raised to power 2 minus x and this becomes minus 2 e raised to power 2 minus x and now I can put the limits which is from 0 to 2 okay now when you put the limits into it first of all you put 2 over here you see this is when you put 2 over here 2 minus 2 is going to be 0 okay so you have uh, minus 2 minus 4 and then minus 2 and then minus so this is your f of 2 now when, when I put 0 into it, this will be 0, this will be 0 and this will become uh, e raised to power 2 over here. This is minus 2 e square left over here, okay? So this one is going to be minus 8 plus 2 e square. Uh, it is probably popular. Okay, I forgot to write square over here. So that is why I'm having a like, you know, uh, this is basically minus 4. So now this one is correct. This is uh, minus 10 plus 2 e square. That is the solution of this question. Okay guys, the last question, the last part. Uh, this is the 10th question. I'll just be doing this first part because the majority uh, was able to do the last two parts of this question. Okay. Now, we have been given two parametric equations of this curve. Okay. And we have to find the gradient at the origin. So, first of all, you need to find dx by dt. This is uh, the logarithmic function. This is 2 over t plus 2 times its derivative that is into 1. And then this is, so this is going to be 2 over t plus 2. And then your dy by dt, that is 3t square plus 2. Okay? Now, we have the dy by dx using the chain rule that is going to be dy by and then this is dx this is going to be dt over here this is going to be dt over here so dy by dt is 3t square plus 2 and it's reciprocal so this is going to be into this t plus 2 over 2 okay now uh, majority reached up to this point but you see you, uh, you can't put t0 over here when we say the gradient of the origin, so that means basically your x is 0 and your y is 0. So by using any of these two, you could find your t and then you have to substitute that t into this gradient over here, okay? So when your x is 0, this is, I think, uh, uh, it is easier to find t from this x, otherwise this is a cubic equation, okay? So put your x 0 here, this is uh, 2 ln t plus 2, that is equal to 0. So this ln t plus 2 equal to 0, this t plus 2 equal to ln inverse of 0 is 1, and then this t is equal to minus 1. So if we put t minus 1 over here, that would basically be giving us the gradient at the origin. So this gradient is going to be, this is 3 into minus 1 square is 3 plus 2 times this is 1, over this is 2. So your answer was 5 over 2. Now guys, thank you very much for this. Um, um, this is such a long video. Uh, I tried to explain the P3, your mock P3 um, 
problems okay this was basically uh, i think i have written here the year okay so this this was a, a full fledged past paper so please take care of yourself and the people around you and allah taala uh, keep you guys blessed allah hafiz